Hey, welcome everyone uh, to the second episode of the webinar of uh, how to choose uh, oh, nailing the UX job. Today's episode is about how to choose the projects to show and your portfolio. And today I will be hosting this session together with Daniela Contreras from Mexico City. So yeah, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Javier. I'm a senior UX designer here in AdviceLine. I've been in the team for uh, almost three years now. Uh, I actually used to be a software engineer before, uh, and I got to uh, switch my uh, career path uh, thanks to uh, the first UX Academy three years ago. Uh, now uh, I focus, I work um, with projects with our clients, and I've been doing uh, web web applications, mobile, chatbots, and voice user interfaces as well. Uh, right now I'm working in a project to uh, manage uh, live, live sporting events to one of our, for one of our clients. Uh, also, I facilitate workshops with our clients internally in the company, and also uh, I like to uh, give courses through Wisen Academy like, like this one. Uh, mentorship, I, I'm also mentoring some other designers from, from the team, and I'm also involved into the hiring initiative. So uh, I, I'm very often interviewing uh, design candidates, and that's why I, I, I got to learn how to, uh, like, to see portfolios from other designers. Uh, you can find me on all social networks with almost the, with with the same hand, handle everywhere. So yeah, that's me. Hello everyone. I'm Daniela. As Javi mentioned, I'm part of the Mexico City team here at Wiseline. I'm a talent ambassador, and mainly my role means that I'm responsible for finding and meeting candidates. This for different open roles that we have in the company. And currently, uh, I work together with our, our design team, uh, being a connection with designers and their next great challenge. Uh, you can find me mainly on LinkedIn uh, with my full name. And well, I'll be happy to receive any new invitations from all of you. All of you. And uh, well, regarding last week, uh, we had awesome designers, Cristina and Chisa, sharing more about their experience building a personal branding. I hope uh, you already had some time to start building your elevator pitch. And um, in the next slide, we have also a quick recap of all the, the topics that they discussed. Um, please try keeping in mind that these topics uh, will help you also for this session. And uh, remember what well, they spoke about building a, re a reputation about the purpose and more motivators. Uh, remember to always keep in mind what type of uh, or what kind of person and of course designer you are and what are those things that make you great and one of the more, most important one to, uh, and important topics that we'll discuss also today and maybe even a small hint about the, the agenda uh, is that always think about your audience. Um, remember, they even created a lovely persona, and well, I hope that you remember the role this persona had. So moving forward and for our agenda, uh, today we'll cover four topics. We'll try to dig deeper and share our experiences regarding the audiences. Uh, we'll also share how to sort out your projects, thinking mainly about your strengths. Uh, also, we'll speak about handling NDAs and finally round everything on how you can choose the best projects and well, these projects that will compose your portfolio. Uh, please remember that we have a Slack channel to follow up with all your questions and even we would want to read some of your own experiences. Please don't be shy. We strongly recommend your participation to help us enrich and, and learn more about regarding these topics. If you don't have a Slack channel or Slack uh, app, sorry, you can always participate uh, on the Zoom chat. Thank you, Daniela, for the introduction. So uh, yeah, uh, go, uh, making a link to the to la, to last episode uh, in which we finalized talking about identifying who you are uh, aiming to, uh, to apply. So uh, we want to start with uh, the topic of the audience. Uh, I think uh, one very important thing is uh, here uh, to remember is uh, that you may be uh, 
talking to very different people. So for in, 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 in this case, you might be t talking to someone like me, which is another designer who is interviewing you or a recruiter that, like Daniela uh, or even a, a manager in a small companies. And I, I heard that also in some other companies, the client may, may interview as well. And if, for example, you are applying to a very small startup, uh, then it might be the chance that also the CEO interviews you. So uh, identifying who's gonna be interviewing you will help you to know what they are looking for, like uh, what things they're doing in their company and whether you will like to showcase to them. So you show them that you are a very, a very valuable uh, uh, asset to add to their team. So uh, I, want, I wanna give some, uh, some ideas of things that you can do uh, for example, you can you can go through uh, to directly to LinkedIn, search about the company you are interested in, uh, look at who's working on that company. And you might you may even look at uh, in their description what they do, what kind of, of of tasks they have or projects. So you would have an idea of this of what kind of things you probably may do if you join that company. So uh, by identifying this kind of things. Uh, you also know what 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 would be more more important to highlight in a portfolio for UX. Uh, also, you you might look at other experience like how they are progressing in their in their career at the same company. So also you, that might get, that might get you a sense of uh, what are the different things that a design that a designer may do through uh, uh, her or his career uh, at a company. And yeah. Uh, uh, I, I think Daniela, you also uh, were mentioning the other day about doing research about the company as well, right? Yes, that's something something important. Uh, also, as as Javi said, remember that the information is not always seen by designers, so being descriptive will help you a lot. A simple example could be that each company names their roles in a different way, and even when the activities might be um, even sorry when the activities might be similar. So you can describe your main tasks and, and responsibilities, and that would make more uh, easier for everyone to understand what's your special, speciality or, yes, what do you do? Keep in mind that uh, when we are looking at your portfolio or any of your projects, we want to get to know you. So that's really important. Yeah. And, Daniela, so, um, so, Daniela, so one example of, of a different name of, for the same position that you may find in, in different companies, uh, in our case, we look at UX uh, designers, but you might find a very similar position in other companies as product designer, interaction designer, uh, and all the, the types of designers that are there in the market right now. Yes, exactly. That's super common. And we'll, we want to, to find the, the best way to understand better what you do. So here also, I would like to make like a small parenthesis. parenthesis and share that recruiters always want for you to succeed in the hiring process. Um, our feedback is mainly focused on trying to make your process easier. So I have had the opportunity to see candidates succeed during a second try, meaning they first might have received feedback that, that stated that their skills were missing uh, some important parts for, for the role but they took the feedback, improved, and during a second opportunity, they reached their goal and received a job offer. So my advice would be to always consider feedback, and of course, feel free to share your own experience on the channel regarding this. Maybe you might also think about a different audience that we are not considering right now, and it's important for other designers to take in consideration. Yeah, about that that example you, you made, Daniela. Uh, I can give a, an, an example of an experience that I had. I actually, uh, before joining Wyzen, I, app I applied to uh, the company that used to be the size of services. It was called Y Services. So I applied to that company and got up to the last step in the process and got rejected. So uh, uh, I, I asked for feedback uh, uh, too, and I... I worked a lot up to apply that feedback. So, uh, and after, uh, uh, a little bit after that, I got also the opportunity to join the first UX Academy. So actually uh, showing that interest, that motivation, and also that I took in consideration and applied the feedback that I received, uh, helped me really a, a lot to be able to afterwards uh, finally join the company. So yeah, that could be one experience. Yes, that's a great example, Javi. 
And well, now that you have a better idea about the audience, I think it's good to consider and do also some research about the company. As Javi said, it's possible that you, well, if possible, you, you can find the mission and vision. And you also might realize that you already have worked in a similar project or, or in a project with a similar approach to the company that you're interested in. And well, if not, don't worry. I'm sure you can find other projects that show your creativity and passion, mainly projects that have impacted you. And well, now Javi is going to share what is a way to identify this type of projects. Yeah, so um, how to choose the project. So the first thing is just make a list, uh, uh, grab some time uh, to concentrate, to focus and trying to remember all the projects that you worked on, uh, either at the company you are currently in or even before that, uh, or at school or any type of project that you did. So uh, you may put out the project name, uh, what kind of media uh, you worked on, if it was a web application, mobile, etc. Uh, what was your role in that project and which skills did you use the most or, or what skills did you de develop thanks to that project? Also, you can put some quick ideas about the process that you follow for that project or some artifacts that, that, that you had. And then you, you probably just will just rank the project, the project, select the most important ones. And from there, uh, select what is the most important project and then the, the rest. So I, I can show you an example of how I did it uh, in, in my case. So uh, I use this very cool app that I recently discovered thanks to other colleagues. It's called Notion. So uh, give it a try. I hope you like it. Uh, but what I did here was to put all the projects that I could remember that I did uh, while working here at Wiseline. Uh, I didn't put the name of the clients, of course, but yeah, those are basically the descriptions of what was the project about. Then I put the platform and, and the project that, that I worked, for example, web applications, Android, uh, even a research project or Alexa skill, workshops, iOS, or, or, a, chat, or a chatbot as well. Then I put what parts of the process that I did or some artifacts, like if I did some user interviews, uh, user story mapping, if I did sketching and prototyping, or even if I defined some uh, conversation flows for an, an Alexa skill. So this will give you an idea of how to choose a project to, so you are able to show uh, more diversity in your portfolio. So uh, yeah, and for example, uh, uh, going back to the example that, that Daniela said about if you are interested in a uh, very specific uh, type of company, so let's say I'm a very fan of sports, so I, uh, I may want to apply to a company that dedicates to that. So I will try to select one of my projects that talks about that kind of uh, industry so it, it's more related to the company that I am applying to and also will uh, call their attention uh, easier. So yeah, this is just an idea of how uh, to choose a project. Uh, I actually checked eight projects, so I may uh, need to uh, make that list uh, a little bit smaller. So I can, so I just show the most important ones. And well, this leads us also to identifying your strengths. I think that it's really important identifying your strengths, and of course the harder technical skills that are some of, of course, what have you already mentioned about his own experience are really important. But also I think soft skills are, are really important to most of the companies. And for example, I think that's really nice when a designer is able to recognize the collaboration that other team members had on the same project. So you can always remember using adjectives or even small phrases complementing them. And this gives us companies a hint of the collaboration and maybe leadership, skill, leadership skills that you already had in different projects. And well, we understand that it could be hard sometimes to determine those strengths. So have you has a really cool exercise to help you with that. Yeah, so uh, I, I took this exercise from a, another designer who is very active on the, uh, in the internet. Uh, her name is Hara Dudi. He also has a, she also has a, a course about how to build a portfolio. So if you are interested in that, take a look uh, to the, uh, her profile, her YouTube channel and her website. But basically uh, he she was proposing this exercise that was about two main questions. The first one is uh, 
to ask what do you team think I'm naturally skilled at? So uh, with this, you will identify what are the things that you don't need to put a lot of effort in to be good at. So those are really good at strengths that you have. And the other one is what do you think are my mo my underutilized skills? So probably some skills I, I already have, but I'm not using that often. And those may be uh, some quick wins that I have that, that I can I could have in order to make some uh, growth in my career. Uh, so uh, I propose to ask about seven colleagues. Uh, I think seven is a good number. If you would just if you want to get more uh, data, you may ask to some more people. Uh, in my case, I did the exercise and I asked my manager, some designers that I work very close with in uh, in projects with our clients, or some even some people that I uh, was mentoring, or even developers, like anyone who is who knows about how you work and will be able to know. What are your strengths? So after doing that, uh, you may identify some patterns. So in the side of the natural skills, uh, you may count if you interview to seven people, let's say that in uh, communications, five out of seven person told me that I'm really good at that. And, I, and I, I'm, I'm naturally skilled at that, at that thing. Organization, three out of seven, etc. And then you do the same for the underutilized skills. But then what you do with this information, so you may focus on highlighting the things that you are naturally good at, because those are the things that you will like, will help you to stand out from your, uh, either your resume or your portfolio as well. And in the other side, for the others, you just start, just start using them more often uh, until you uh, are really good at using uh, them very frequently. So you can also highlight them in your, in your profile. So uh, before going to the next topic, which is about uh, selecting those projects from the list that you created, I just want to uh, uh, to emphasize that uh, I, I give I give I give the example of thinking about possible artifacts or things that you did in a in a particular project, but do not forget that the most important thing is to showcase the process that you follow for a for a project from start to end. Uh, the artifacts and design documents are really good to complement and also they will help you to tell a story. But the most important thing is the process. So you are able to tell your audience how you took the decisions and how you solve a problem for a, for a group of users. So uh, in the case of projects, you may, you may have uh, two different options. The first one is, uh, to document the projects that you work on in the company, one option is to, as you work on them, start documenting. So it will be easier for you uh, once you finalize the project to have all the information and then just select the most important parts of that. But the other case, uh, let's say that you left a company and you want to show one uh, project that you did at that company and you don't have any more, the, probably the sketch files or uh, some mockups that you did, uh, you 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 can recreate those. So that's also valid uh, because at the end you just want to tell the story of of what is the experience that you have, what kind of projects uh, you did before. But also, uh, some of you may ask, what I do if I don't have any uh, work projects or any anything uh, like, that I did in a company? And Daniela has some very cool suggestions for that. Yes, you might think that this sounds kind of silly but it's really common to hear that sometimes designers for some reason don't have the opportunity to document a, a project so you might think what now we encourage you to volunteer you might always find a friend that is starting a business uh, you might look for a nonprofit organization or maybe just an internal project and these people that is your friends or anyone it's always um, wanting this type of help so when you get that type of project remember to document each step and well i would like to know if there are any questions um we have some time right now and well we strongly encourage for you to to ask uh considering that projects will be the core of your portfolio yeah, please uh, go ahead and don't be shy. Ask any questions, even uh, through Zoom webinar 
or to our Slack channel. So we'll be very happy to answer all the questions that you have. Okay, it seems we don't have questions right now, but we still have some time. So please feel free to, to jump in. Right, so Daniel, now we have the next topic, NDAs. How do you handle that? <laughs> I think this is one of the toughest topics for me. Um, I would like to, to share again and mention that recruiters really want for you to succeed on a process. And we sometimes are a little pushy uh, to trying to get the information from you. Um, but well, some of the, of, of the recommendations would be to handle this situation would be uh, understanding that this, well, we know this is a, a sensitive subject. So you should feel free to ask who might have access to this information. You might feel, you should feel free, sorry, to ask the recruiter or anyone during the, the process that you are going through to know who, who would have access. And well, this might mean also to discuss it with your former or current company just to know which assets are, are good to be shown. And well, in your experience, have you as a designer, what, what are some suggestions from you? Yeah, so some other options are uh, like if you have, let's say, uh, some mockups, uh, you can replace uh, some data or even uh, protect that data with uh, blue reports in the image. Uh, or also, uh, if you have uh, logos from the client, you may change the logo for something more generic. Uh, I've seen even some designers are changing color palettes or even changing the whole industry. I, I remember a, a, a designer that was showing a project that was actually for events, but for his portfolio, he changed it to something about food and places to eat. So that's, that's also valid. So you are able to also show some visuals, but then when you share uh, the portfolio itself with, your, with the people who are interviewing you, you can tell that. Uh, also, uh, there are some other options, uh, or this is not really NDAs, but it's also another way to show your expertise. So uh, there, are very, uh, there are a lot of people very active in, in social media, like Medium, for example, uh, writing uh, blog posts with uh, case studies about uh, how they uh, went from uh, a problem and to uh, ideation, uh, research, and a solution. So. Uh, that may be another option for you to uh, start writing blog posts with case studies uh, of work that, that you did or, or experiments that you are doing. Uh, so, so yeah, that, that's another option. So uh, I, I think that that makes that uh, you uh, you to not to not have any excuses to have an empty portfolio. So, so yeah, uh, start documenting the projects that you already had or volunteer and create new projects so you are able to show your skills. And Javi, we have some questions, so um, I'm going to take this opportunity to read them to you. Uh, so Gus, hi Gus, he's asking, as a manager, what's the way you give to real projects against generated pro projects? Okay. Uh, okay, Gus, thank you. thank you very much for asking, Gus. So you said, as a manager, what's the way to select real projects versus generated projects? Yes, I think he's asking about, um, well, when you don't have like a formal documentation and we are giving these tips about, uh, well, just choosing an example. How okay. I, I understand that what would be the way in, in a hiring process. Okay, uh, I think for, for us as, uh, as people involved in the hiring process, the most important thing is to see the skills that you have. So uh, the easiest part for us is to see a portfolio in which someone is showcasing the skills that they have. Uh, and, and really the portfolio, it helps more just to get the interview. And for the first interview that we have for, uh, for, here, for, for him or her to tell us about uh, how they went through that uh, project. So think about the things that you're gonna uh, put in a case study. It will help you to uh, share an experience during a call with someone interviewing you. So uh, if, you don't, if you don't have the original materials that you did for that project, you can recreate them because at the end, the thing that you will do is just to tell the story of how, of how you did that project. So uh, I hope that answers your question, Gus. If not, please uh, ask us again so we can uh, complement and, 
uh, yeah, and help to get that, that answer. And also we have another question from Katia, I think it's related. Um, how do you find time to work on projects for portfolio showcase? And a second question related, how do you manage this kind of projects? Okay, that's a very tough one. So thank you very much for asking Katia. So uh, uh, I honestly don't work too much on, on documenting my portfolio uh because i often i'm often very busy during the week but i think one suggestion to uh to make this easier for you is is while you work on the project just have a a, a note taking app put all the steps that you are following and that kind of like a journal so you can have kind of like a journal putting the decisions that you are making each day things that you did that day so at the end once you once you finish the project you have that journal of all the things that you did in the project and will be easier for you to just to extract the key information for that. Uh, but yeah, I, I know that it's a very time consuming uh, work uh, and probably that's the reason I, I why, why I don't do this. Uh, but I, 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 I will encourage you if you are actively looking for a UX job, uh, you, you just will need to manage your, uh, your schedule so you are able to document that. But I think, Having a journal will help you uh, to do that uh, much faster and with uh, less effort. Yes, and I would like to add there that maybe you can uh, think about a due date, um, something that is uh, doable for you, but maybe having like this goal set, it would help you just to, to find the time to, to work on this. And well, we have a question also from Alfonso. Thank you, Alfonso. And he says, it is, is it important for a UX designer portfolio that you also have programming knowledge or coding skills? What do you think, Javi? Mm, thank you very much for asking, Alfonso. Uh, I think it helps. It's not, it's not something crucial. Uh, it, depends on the, it depends a lot on the type of role that you are applying. For, so, for example, for UX designers, it is helpful to have that knowledge, but really you won't be using that, those skills very much. Uh, in my case, uh, I'm, I'm, I used to be a software engineer, so I have that knowledge. And in the situation that helped me the most is when I need to discuss uh, with engineers about some uh, limitations of the API or the, the things of how the, 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 the architecture of the, the system is uh, created. Uh, probably the, in the kind of role that will help you the most to have this kind of skills, especially HTML, CSS, and a little bit of JavaScript is if you, want, if you would like to be a UI designer, because I know that they work more closely with front-end developers creating design systems, libraries of components, and, and also they do a, very often a lot of uh, uh, animations of UI when prototyping and stuff like that. So in short, it will help, but it won't be crucial. So uh, I, I won't reject someone uh, applying to Wildland because they don't know how to code, but it will really uh, be cool if they, if, if they know how to do it. Great. And well, one last question from Veronica. Um, she's asking, what is a good amount of projects to showcase in a portfolio? So we still have some uh, topics coming up. So we might answer your question. If not, please just ping us again and we'll get back with that one. Yeah, thank you very much for asking, Veronica. Uh, yeah, we will, we will actually talk about that topic in the in the reminding the reminding of the the session. But to answer, it's a good number is between three to six to six projects. Great. So I think we can move on and come back if we have more questions. Okay. Thank you very much for asking and keep the questions coming. We are uh, we'll be very happy to keep us answering all your questions. All right, so now we have the topic about choosing the best ones. So you already have the list of all the projects that you worked on. How do you choose the most important and how do you uh, prioritize what to show in a portfolio? So uh, this is a question that, that, mm -hmm. that, that you made, Veronica. Uh, for, for this, uh, for your portfolio, you, will like, you, you may focus on, uh, on quality 
over quantity of projects. So a good number will be between three to six projects. And I think it depends a lot on the type of company. So for example, if you are applying to a, a services company like Wise9, you may want to have some diversity of projects. So having a web application and a mobile app and probably a chatbot, uh, research, and also, I don't know, uh, that you are able to facilitate workshops will be really good to show in a portfolio. But then if you're applying to uh, a product company that creates mobile applications, probably you will, you will want to only show uh, iOS and Android applications because that's more focused to that company. Uh, as I said, you will explain the process that you follow in, in, in every project and also showcase your expertise. And uh, you will put also the best projects first. So uh, it, will, it will be most likely that the, the hiring managers, the recruiters, and the people interviewing you will see the most important projects first. Uh, one idea that, that you can have is like, I don't know, if you have one project that you know is your best projects of all of them, you can even put it like kind of like a hero image in your portfolio or very, very big as a feature section in the list of projects that you have. So you ensure that everyone who answers, enters to your portfolio will see that project first. Uh, also, Anila, you, the, the, you will uh, tell me uh, the last time we have had a conversation about uh, highlighting projects with dates and stuff like that. Yes, actually, I found that considering dates of each, well, on showing the dates of each project and organize them accordingly, it's also a good way to, to show how your experience and skills have been evolving. This has helped me a lot with candidates that um, have passed through, through the next rounds with the, with the design hiring team here at Wi-Fi. Yeah, and, and very important, uh, keep it updated. If you are actively looking for a, a job at UX, uh, the best thing you can do just to keep updated the, the, the portfolio that you have. So if you're working on a very cool new project, add it to your portfolio because that will help you to showcase uh, your strengths and also the progression that you are having, like how you are improving from the first project that you did to the one that you are doing right now. That's also very valuable. Okay, and so we have final before thoughts. Before jumping on the final thoughts, we have another question. Okay. Uh, this is from Eugenia. Um, she's saying, if I want to showcase a workshop I have designed and facilitated, but at the end, the result that it's an app uh, was designed by someone else, should I include, include the final app or result as part of the process? Of course, specifying what was my participation in each phase, or is it better just to show the process where I ended, just the, meaning just the workshop? Thank you very much for asking, Eugenia. Uh, I think it's okay to add it at the end, uh, only if that designer agrees to share that. And also it's very important to highlight that you didn't uh, do that final design. But I think in this case, if, if what you want to show is your ex expertise and skills on facilitating workshops uh, and running those sessions, I think the most important thing for you is to focus on describing that. So at the end, you can just put like, okay, after the workshop, uh, there was an application that was created because of this. And uh, you, you, you may just put it, but I, I won't highlight it a lot. So I hope that answers your, your question, Eugenia. And um, well, I don't know if there are any more questions. We are just about to, to finish and we wouldn't want to miss any, any of them. So we'll give maybe one minute if anyone wants to, to ask something else. Also, before we forget, uh, if you want to share, uh, share sorry, experiences, that's also something really valuable. We would like to hear uh, if you have something different from what we already shared with you. Uh, 
Okay, we have one more from Carlos. Uh, Carlos is asking, is, um, okay, is it any case where it is okay to show non-real projects? Mm, okay, thank you for asking, Carlos. Uh, I, th I think you are referring to projects that you, uh, uh, that work experiments or stuff like that. Uh, if, if I'm not correct, please uh, clarify in the channel so I can uh, change my answer. But from what I understood, I think it's okay. Like if, if you did, for example, uh, a case study for an app of I don't know, public transportation and it was something that you did from scratch, like you interviewed some people, you created some design concepts, even though if it wasn't a real project, it is something that you did with, with the skills that you have. So I would say that it's completely fine to add that to your portfolio because with that you showcase uh, that you know to do some stuff uh, regard, uh, related to design. Uh, I, I've seen some other designers in, 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 in the internet doing even uh, case studies are on uh, how, uh, redesigning the, uh, uh, I don't know, a certain bank of Mexico uh, application. So they the interviews to so find the pain points of the users, and then they created a concept with the branding of that of that company. Um, also, uh, people doing redesigns of, of very uh, uh, well-known platforms like Gmail, YouTube, and stuff like that. So I think it's also valid to to create those uh, kind of concepts so you can uh, showcase the skills that you have. Great. So I'm checking and I think we don't have questions right now. So maybe we can share the final thoughts and we still have some minutes left. Okay. Okay. So as we mentioned, always, always document your projects. Um, we're sure that you'll find some time to, to work on that. And if not, we, well, we think that we've shared some tips that might help you just to start organizing uh, some of your ideas, strengths, and then showcasing them. Yeah, then we have another two, two other ones. Uh, and the first is uh, use the right content, uh, the right context to, uh, to communicate and to tell a story. Uh, very often I, uh, we receive some uh, portfolios that are some uh, only like, screenshots of random UI in which we don't really understand the war behind of that, the decisions, why, why, why you made that application look like that. So uh, what I recommend is to through the process, explain the steps that you follow uh, together with, with the wireframes, uh, mockups or anything that you did uh, in context of those steps. So we, it's, it's easier for us as interviewers to understand how you went from point A to point B and solving a, a particular uh, problem. And the other one is be an original content creator. Very often I, find, I find people using uh, uh, stock images that are now very common for uh, most of us because we see them very often. So uh, instead, if let's say you want to show someone in a, uh, working on a computer in their desk, it's preferable that you create that photo by taking a picture to someone uh, doing that instead of grabbing uh, an image of, of that kind in the internet. Because uh, if you look like very similar to the other candidates, you won't stand out. And what you really want at this step is to stand out from the rest. So us as interviewers will really remember you uh, from all the, the people that are applying. So yeah, uh, those are some final thoughts uh, that we have for uh, this episode. Uh, and I have seen this, this quote uh, as well uh, that is related to one of the final thoughts that I had is, it's from Sarah Dudi, uh, the, the one that I mentioned about the, the designer that has a, this uh, course about how to uh, create a portfolio and she gives webinars about that. But she says that I wish that a portfolio sites had a better way for, for UX designers to show how they think and not just pretty pixels and nice wireframes. So it's related as, as to what I said, do not put only uh, wireframes, mock-up and stuff like that. Better try to tell a story together with those uh, visual assets that you have. 
Uh, this is uh, the website that uh, Sara has. If you if you would like to dig deeper into this, I highly recommend uh, her website. Uh, there's a portfolio blueprint. I think it, it's free to download, but she also has a very deep uh, course that you can uh, pay and subscribe to. Daniela, do do we have more more questions before we finish the the episode? Yes, we have one more. I think it's from Katia. Um, she's asking, do you know any other platform besides Behance or Dribble where you can post your portfolio? Yeah, and actually that will be <laughs> the next topic. Uh, no, the episode after the next one, uh, some of our colleagues will talk about uh, platforms that you can use, but I can give you some answers. Uh, you can use uh, Dropbox Showcase, uh, even no Notion, the app that I showed uh, earlier uh, today. I think also has some uh, features to share. Um, you can even code the, the, the portfolio from scratch. Um, what else? There are some other uh, uh, websites which I don't remember the name right now, but also help you to uh, create a website with uh, password protection and stuff like that. But I will highly encourage uh, you to join the next episodes because in that we will talk about this uh, deeper. Yes, and we have other questions uh, from Eugenia. She's asking, what about including, including real first wireframes and design as they were created? Perhaps messy handmade drawings with notes, napkins also, versus recreating the wireframe with a digital tool. What do you think, Javi? Thank you very much for asking, Daniela. Of course, of course, do that. It's very, very cool for us to see the creative process. Even if you make, as you say, the sketches into a napkin, it's very cool to see that kind of, uh, of craft. So I will highly encourage to include that kind of uh, uh, images and, and, and work that you did even before doing the very polished uh, uh, work. So yeah, definitely, yes. Yes, I agree. I think it's cool to see how the design um, improved during the whole this thinking process that you that you had. Yeah, and to see all the explorations that you did. So if you had a whiteboarding session with someone or just or, or just you, also include a, a photo of the whiteboarding session. Uh, it's very cool to see that creative process. Completely agree. And we have also one question from Diego. Um, he's asking, well, that kind of a Sorry, that kind of online platforms that are made to show UX portfolios, how are they perceived by the companies instead, instead of a traditional PDF or any other media? Mm, well, PDFs work well in some cases, uh, but if you have a lot of visuals, a lot of images, your portfolio may turn very, very big, the file. So for us, it's very painful to open huge PDFs because they take years to load and, and sometimes they even freeze our computers. So uh, yeah, in that, in that scenario, if you have a very big portfolio with a lot of visual uh, elements, I will highly encourage to uh, use a, a, a platform like those because that will make it easier for us to navigate the project that you have. It also it will be easier just to share a link of the project instead of sending a, sending a file. So yeah, th those are two options. Uh, depending on the type of portfolio you have, choose one to another. Yes, and as well, we we also uh, saw on the last one on the first sorry episode. Uh, each platform has like a different uh, goal. So, for example, in my experience, some only show images or don't allow to to have a lot of description. So maybe you could also take that in consideration to, to find out what would be best for you and, and the type of projects that you want to, to show. Um, we have another question from Gabi. Um, Gabi is asking, how many pages long? Is it okay for a UX portfolio? Thank you very much for asking, Gabi. Uh, Actually, in the next episode, we will talk about that topic into uh, detail, like how to structure the information. Uh, my recommendation is, is 
try to keep it as more as concise and short as possible because what we do often is just to scan the the case study try to see like the the steps that you follow some uh, screenshots and then once we are very interested into that we read it in detail so yeah uh, uh, Arturo and, and Berenice who will be the the hosts for the next episode will talk very deep about this topic so I highly recommend you to to join the next webinar yes and well I think we don't have more questions right now um but you also had I think we have one more sorry Just... okay just one second, sorry. Okay. Um, well, Carlos is asking, uh, how about software? Is it relevant the software you used? Uh, for example, Sketch, Adobe, um, versus Envision or any other? Thank you for asking, Carlos. Uh, I think it's not very relevant. It it helps just for context, like to say, ah, I use this app to create a, a I don't know a components library or something like that, or, or I did this prototype using this tool. Uh, it helps just to have context, but I mean it's not crucial. Uh, as designers, we expect you to be uh, flexible and adaptable, and to be able to learn any kind of tool that you will need. For a particular project, so yeah, I think it's helpful, but not 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 really crucial. Great. I think now that that are all the questions. Well, those were the all the all the questions, but you, as you saw, you can also reach out through LinkedIn or any other network if you remember or think of something else. Yeah, thank you very much, all of you, for uh, asking your questions. Uh, we hope you liked this episode. Uh, so for next week, as I said, we will uh, dig deeper into how to write a case study, in which Arturo and Berenice Beltran, who are very talented uh, at designers and technical writers, uh, will give you a lot of tips on how to do this. So stay tuned for next week, uh, June th uh, 3rd, uh, 7 p.m. again. And also, uh, please uh, leave us uh, your feedback at, uh, into this uh, link that we have here. And thank you very much for joining. We hope you enjoyed the session. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you for the questions. And I hope that this is helpful for you to, to get your next great job. <laughs>